Hey guys, this is HT Mario. What's up? Good morning. Um, still, just woke up a little bit ago. Uh, you can see I messed up my hair. <laughs> I want to tell you guys something, a uh, quick tip, and this one's going to be about build orders. Build orders are very important. Why are build orders important? Well, the way you open up, you can be hard countered, and it's if you go into a game, you have to have a, a game plan, something that you can deviate from with the previous tip so that you can be greedy in a sense, something that you can alter. You should always have at least one build order. I recommend at least two, one economy wise, or three. One economy, you know, so you focus on being a little greedy, one on being aggressive, and one on being safe. So, you know, you should ultimately have an arsenal of build orders you can use just in case you're facing somebody who knows your playstyle. And that's, you know, wherever you are, maybe if you're in a smaller tournament, that's always a good thing to do. So, what I want to discuss here is when you do a build order, you have to know what can kill a build order and anticipate for that, and then you can do anything. So, as an example, in Terran against Terran, we're just going to say, well, proxy reapers are difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up with our own Reaper, we're going to scout a little bit, you know, maybe check out his base rather early, which we did over here, and see, is he making uh, Reapers, is he making Marine, how many, uh, you know, how many barracks does he have? And if you come up the ramp and you see at least one Marine, you know it's not a Reaper all in, so awesome. Uh, your second thing to stop is like a Marine Hellion. That timing comes pretty early on. Is it one base? Is it two base? We saw that this player was going for an, a pretty early expansion, so we figured, all right, it's not going to be an early gas base all in, which means we don't have to worry too much about missile turrets. We don't have to worry too much about a Raven for detection. You know, it could come a little bit later. Everything heavy gas tech is going to be late for the next one or two minutes, which means that we can play greedy for the next one or two minutes. And in that sense, one thing we did to play greedy is that we got an early expansion off of a normally one base play uh, for a little bit. You know, we got a kind of early gas and a kind of an early factor. We just, a factory. We just got one Reaper. We didn't have to have any follow-up units because we knew it was Marines and we knew he was going for an expansion. And now we're getting some Widow Mines. Why Widow Mines? Well, we know that if it's a heavy ground-based play, then Mar uh, Widow Mines are really awesome split up because he's got to have a lot of scans. And if he's been mulling, he doesn't have a lot of scans. We can deter him just from the sheer fact that he's afraid he's going to run into Widow Mines. So... Uh, your bail should always be considerate of what the opponent could do, various types of cheeses and all in. Some of these for like Protoss are 530, it's going to be a warp gate push, you know, 540, it's the possibility of an oracle. You have to scout how many gas does he have, is he kind of boosting his every another score? Uh, let's see here. Another thing they can do is 7 minute 1 base blink stalker, 8 minute 2 base blink stalker, uh, eight, or 7 minute 30 seconds dark templar, uh, you know, drop the engineering bay by 6 minutes and your missile turret. At by 645, you'll have it up no matter how fast it is. Uh, sh there's so many different things that you can prepare for, you know. So, those are the important ones against Protoss. Against Zerg, you can go 530 Bailing Bust, one base, 630 Bailing Bust, two base, seven minutes to seven minutes, 30 seconds, Bailing Bust with Roaches, two base. And one of the ways you scout that is like, does how many gas geysers does he have at that phase of the game? Use a reaper, use a use a Viking, use a building, use a scan on the natural. More often than not, they'll take both gas and the natural. And if you don't see any sign of a lair, but you do see sign of a roach ward and a bailing nest, then it's going to be a bust and get your defenses. So it's important to know what to scout for. It's important to know how to respond so you can have a good build order. When you pick a build order right out of the gate, you have to pick something you just want to do. Sometimes you have to go, well, I'm just going to do this build order, and it's going to make me weaker to, let's say, it's going to make me weaker to a 4-gate. Now, the odds of being 4-gated on the ladder is quite low. So, one of the things that you can say is, like, I'm going to roll the dice and be weak to a 4-gate, but be strong to a blank stalker. So I'm going to have very few units to defend a 4-gate, and I'm only going to have enough to defend a, a Zealot Stalker and Mothership Core pressure if they're doing that pressure. If they grab an early uh, next side by 3 minutes and 20 seconds, uh, or sorry, 4 minutes and 20 seconds, if a uh, Nexus is not near 400, 420 HP, 420 shields, then odds are that this next side 
is drop late and he's got some tech behind it. But if it is near that face, then you can go, okay, standard play. I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to play a little bit greedy and then just get ready to defend the next possible timing attack. But your build order has to match this. So build order is very important. When you make a build order, make sure you know what you have to stop by when, how you can stop it, depending based on your scout, and how you can deviate. But you don't, your build orders don't have to be standard. Your build orders can be a little bit different. They can be a little tweaking. Based on what you scout, you can have fun with it. Some people will tell you that you cannot do something because it simply doesn't work. One of those things they might tell you is Mass Widow Mind Siege Tank. The right, you cannot do it because it simply doesn't work. Unless the, op the opponent provides the opportunity for you to do that. How would they provide the opportunity? Well, one of the reasons it doesn't work is because you don't have enough time. If they do a Hellion drop, the Widow Mines aren't going to be as helpful in defending it. You don't have enough time to flat out defend it. But what if you have like a missile turret or something, you know? Um, or, or, I mean, this is for Banshees, but what if you have uh, no way for him to get into the main? Because uh, why, why would this be a factor in this game? Well, we know he went for an early expansion. We saw some Marines. We saw no sign of the Banshee at all yet, you know. Uh, we, we know that he was probably going for an expansion because of the amount of workers he had going on in his gas. How much he had in his gas. But uh, we also know that since we thought he was going for an expansion, he wasn't gonna. He was gonna have a late starport. He might go a heavy bio type opener. So because we scouted how much was in his gas, we knew that probably more often than not, he's a going to be a bio player. See the second barracks, and his starport was going to be quite late. So how do we respond to that? Well, you're probably not going to drop me, but just in case you go for a later banshee, we got these missile turrets. Why did we get them, even though we know we just put star ports got probably going to be late? Well, but the Banshee would be a hard counter to what we're doing right now, so we have to defend against the hard counter. But everything else we can skimp on, which is why we have no single unit that can defend a drop right now. We have a siege tank on the way, but we don't have really have anything that can defend a drop. Here comes another command center. So we're going up to three command centers. We're upgrading the armor. And then from here on out, we're going to be going straight into Widow Mine Siege Tank play. Now, again, not a strategy that should work, but based on the scouting that we've done, we figured maybe this is a possibility. Look at the opponent's vision. Here he comes. So he sees his vision. He kind of looks around. And boom. Oh, Widow Mine. Okay, well, whatever. You have one Widow Mine that we saw. And we just blew the charge. Let's attack. Let's look at my vision. We have everything. We see everything. We have a widow mine over here. We have a widow mine over here. We have widow mines over here. And then we've almost got the burrow upgrade. You know, in this sense, we were preparing for a pure anti ground attack. Why? Well, we knew it was probably going to be pure ground. And we probably knew it was going to be delayed because of the timing of this command sensor being rather early. His gas is going to be delayed. This is a 10 minute push. Normally, this would come with medevacs. At this stage of the game, this push, if it was a one base without a banshee, would come two minutes earlier. Two minutes earlier, we wouldn't have the siege tank, or you know, our burrow wouldn't almost be done. We wouldn't have almost our armor. Uh, you know, we wouldn't have nearly as many widow, mass, widow mines. We just would have died. So it's important to do scouting and to, and to pick your build order in a sense based on what you scout. Uh, again, with greed. Build orders are quite important, especially deviations in the future. So this is a little bit follow-up to the last one. Always make sure that you have a good follow-up to your build order. So here it comes in. He tries to find his way around. He keeps getting hit with the Widow Mines. Is this on purpose? Absolutely. This was our entire goal, to force him into Widow Mines. To create like a minefield of where he has to keep scanning to come through. So, this is not a build that is supposed to work by any means. The only reason this build works is base of a large scatter. A little bit of burrow, hit, 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 throw it away. Now, as part of any build order, as we mentioned in the last stage, you have to know when you have to play greedy. So, th this is what this is right here. But the build orders uh, are more than knowing when to play greedy. You have to continuously be aware of what you are vulnerable to. One of the uh, parts you know about that is like, you know, how much of his army did you kill? Does how many medevacs does he have? You always make a subconscious note on how many units he has, what his ability is to produce them, compared to your ability to produce them. Little 
cute field out here. So that's all I gotta say about build orders. What I think one of the next things we're gonna cover is positioning. We might use a parts of this replay as well to help with positioning because as you can see we've got some funky positioning, watchtower, some units out front to hit anything that kind of comes from this angle and something that comes from this angle to snipe the siege tank. We got some siege tanks over here. Uh, anything that comes in this section, the Widow Mine doubles that attack. So we got two Widow Mines for each tank shot with the exact same range. And a missile turret to help stop uh, Metavax from boosting in from that angle specifically. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed one of my quick tips. We're going to focus more on positioning maybe next time. Maybe we're going to be focusing a little bit more on a specific board order. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you want to hear below. And I will make a quick tip on how to help you guys. Thanks. Bye. Hey guys, this is Milena, Mario's wife. You guys had some questions for him on the last uh, quick Yo. tip video, so I thought I'd ask, I'd ask him for you. The first question is, what if you can't scout as easily as you did that on that game? Scan. Check his gas timings. Keep a unit at his third. If he's not expanding, check his tech. Scan for attack. If he's teching fast, he's not going to attack anytime soon. But if he's not teching fast, he's got a lot of production facilities, he's going to attack you. Don't play greedy if he has a lot of production facilities. Be more than welcome to play greedy if he has a lot of tech buildings. The moment he starts producing production buildings, that's when you know you have to be safe. Uh, number two, I thought you quit StarCraft. I did. It got annoying to play. It was a burden. I didn't play for two months. Uh, I signed up for a tournament before I quit. I even said that in my retirement post. I went to the tournament just to fill my, fulfill my promise to my local community. I won it. I had a shit ton of fun. They told me I qualified for another tournament. Might as well practice. So I'm becoming a little bit more fun. And with each game at the tournament, I just had more and more. And now I think I'm just going to see how much I'm playing. I'm not back, but I'm playing more than I expected. So if you guys like this, just uh, ask other questions on this video and I'll see if I can get Mario to answer them for you. See you later.